December 3rd, 2017. Thank you for joining Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. We are looking at Yale University, the Skull and Bones Society, arguably the world's most famous secret society. And if you've ever been to Yale, it's, it's gorgeous. It's a very, very old university, and it definitely has a very mysterious air to it. And if you've gone by the Skull and Bones area, it actually feels rather creepy. So the Skull and Bones Society was founded in 1832. And here you could see uh, some of the names on the founding list. Where it's located, it's in New Haven, Connecticut. And it's very close to New Haven Green. Um, walking distance to the green and New Haven is a great college town I lived about 12 minutes from there so I used to go by the area and I have walked um, around the green and around the Skull and Bones area and through Yale myself uh, many many times and uh, definitely an interesting vibe if you're really sensitive to energies you you could kind of feel it the Skull and Crossbones Society, um, it's originally known as the Brotherhood of Death. It is one of the oldest student secret societies in the United States. Both of the Bush presidents were members of the society when studying at Yale. And also, grant their grandfather, Prescott, was a member of the society as well. So it's definitely in the Bush lineage and tradition. The society is surrounded by conspiracy theories, the most popular of which it's probably the idea that the CIA is built on members from the group. It does seem to be the case. And here you can see President Bush in, um, in his younger years. And there are both President Bushes, who are both members, as well as President Taft, who was a member as well. And this is another picture of President Bush, George W. And this is supposedly the skull of Geronimo sitting right here. This is their centerpiece of which they did all their rituals, ceremonies, and drinking events around. And this is Prescott with a picture of Geronimo to the left and Geronimo's skull and bones. And the reason why we think it really, really is, is because there's been lawsuits brought up demanding the return of the stolen remains. And so this is out of the Telegraph, and this is actually back in 09. American Indian leader Geronimo's descendants have launched a legal fight to have his stolen remains returned to his birthplace in the Gila Mountains of New Mexico. He died in, of pneumonia in 1909 as a prisoner of war at Fort Sill, after decades spent fighting against U.S. and Mexican expansion into Apache lands. So they claim his body was taken by members of the Skull and Bones, a secret student society and hidden at Yale University. George W. Bush's grandfather and two other members of the group are said to have taken the remains of Apache warrior Geronimo during the First World War. However, the societies repeatedly refused to comment on the story or on rumors that any of the new members have to kiss the chief's skull has prompted the extraordinary lawsuit. So that's part of the ritual. They must, they must kiss the chief's skull. In a court action that names not only Yale and the society, but also Barack Obama and Robert Gates, his defense secretary, 20 descendants of the famous American Indian leader are seeking to recover his remains so his spirit can be laid to rest on his tribal homeland. Their legal action filed a week in a federal court, uh, federal district court in Washington, D.C. on the 100th anniversary of his de death will seek to determine the truth of rumors that Geronimo's burial at Fort Sill in Oklahoma was not his final resting place. So three bonesmen, including Prescott Bush, served at Fort Sill during the First World War. The trio were rumored to have dug up Geronimo's remains in 1918, and they took the, some of them back to Yale, where they are supposedly still kept in the Society's Hall, known as the Tomb, on university campus. 
The Skull and Bones, whose illustrious membership has numbered three U.S. presidents, including both Bushes, supposedly makes new members kiss the Apache skull of Geronimo. The lawsuit, which also names Pete Guerin, the Army Secretary, as defendant, seeks to free Geronimo, his remains, funerary objects, and spirit from a hundred years of imprisonment at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and the Hill University campus at New Haven, Connecticut, and wherever else they might be found. So, pretty interesting. Um, so, that is more than just a rumor if they're going through with this. They believe there is truth in it. So, and this is another one out of Time Magazine, actually talking about the same thing. Um, exact same thing. So, more than a rumor. The 15 most powerful members of Skull and Bones. This is Business Insider. So we have business titans, poets, politicians, and three U.S. presidents. President Taft, class of 1878. So he's definitely one of your more famous ones. Amos Stagg, he was a great football player. William Averill Harriman. Class of 1913, future governor of New York and a presidential candidate. Archibald MacLeish. Of course, Prescott Bush. Very, very infamous, actually. Robert Lovett, which was Harry Truman's Secretary of War and the architect of the Cold War. Henry Luce went on to pub uh, actually publish Time Magazine. Potter Stewart, son of a Midwestern congressman. George McGeorge Bundy, before becoming one of JFK's wise men, Bundy was another bonesman with a long family lineage. And if you remember, Bundy is one of the families that's in the Illuminati. George Herbert Walker Bush, class of 48. William F. Buckley Jr., there you go. John Kerry. George W. Bush. Stephen Schwarzman. And actually, on a personal note, I actually have a family member that was at Yale at the same time as George W. Bush. And he knew him personally. And he said, believe me, there's no way he is running the country. Austin Goolsby, Texan-born economist. And then there's other ones in there too, including a Rockefeller, Heinz of the Ketchup Air fame. You know, big who's who and big names, so obviously. It's a powerful society. And there's the two bushes with the famous picture of the skull and crossbones. And some looks inside. Some of these pictures are older. These are some a actual modern day members that want to remain anonymous. And supposedly there are more than one skull in there and they did all sorts of rituals and here you can see outside another old picture with the bones of Geronimo supposedly and performing some of their occult hand symbols whatever that means they recognize each other by some of these symbols and another old time picture so just thought this would be an interesting little thing to add to the collection and info on the secret societies that really run our country and our world. And it's truly an insider's world when you get down to it. And who knows what goes on on the inside. I guess it would take an insider to actually give you that knowledge. Well, I hope you found this interesting. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share with your friends. Spread the news. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do go ahead and subscribe and join the Evolutionary Energy Arts family. 
I truly appreciate everybody's opinions on everything. Whether or not you agree with my opinions, that's fine. We're all entitled to our own opinions. And I love reading your comments. And it, it's very thought-provoking to read so many of your comments. And you guys are great with sharing everything. I truly appreciate it. And thank you for coming by once again. Take care.